Hello, everyone. I am Bianca. Thank you guys for joining us tonight for our paint class. I'm excited to do this project with you guys. Um, I would love for you to drop comments as we go along. Tell me, that, tell me where you guys are from. Tell me what paint projects you are working on or paint projects that you have done in the past. I would love to hear it. And I think we're just going to go ahead and jump straight into this. So over here to the left of me, is this beautifully painted butterfly. And we are going to recreate this here together tonight. And we are going to use a palette knife to spread our colors out. So that is what is unique about this project. We will be using paintbrushes, but to get these beautiful stripes of color and pops of color throughout this painting, we are using palette knives, which I think is pretty unique. You don't paint with a palette knife every day. So, this is one of those projects that is designed to be perfectly imperfect. You do not have to be a professional painter or even someone that has ever painted. I am not the best painter. I am not the best drawer, but this is a project that I think everyone can do. So we will go ahead and jump right into this. Um, of course, you'll need a canvas, which I have mine here already. And I went ahead and I pre-drew out a butterfly. So you can kind of see it here. He's kind of slanted just a little bit. Hi, Jerry from Texas. <laughs> so yeah, I already went ahead and drew out my butterfly. Like I said, I am not the best drawer. So I didn't want you guys to see me struggling to do that on camera. I had to do this about three to four times, but I think I got it. And if you draw yours out at home ahead of time, um, your butterfly does not need to be perfect. Like I said, this is gonna be perfectly imperfect. You actually kind of don't want it to be perfect and you'll see what I mean once we get into this. So I think I'm just gonna grab a paintbrush and get started. Let's grab our first one. So we're gonna start to paint around our butterfly. And I think I'm gonna start with like, a lighter blue and a darker blue and a little bit of white. And I'll call out the colors to you as I go along. Alrighty, so I am going to start with our true blue folk art matte color. All right, and let's just kind of go around our butterfly. Just like this. And if you cover up the lines on your butterfly, that is totally fine. This is kind of an abstract project. So like I said, we do not want it to be perfect. So we're just gonna go around the edges of our butterfly. Bianca, if somebody didn't have a palette knife, what could they use instead? is a great question. So if you did not have a palette knife, what you could use are like some plastic utensils, you know, like from the dollar store or something like that. What you could do is maybe like grab a plastic fork or a plastic spoon and you could use like the actual spoon part, but you could also flip it around and kind of use the handle because it's similar to the palette knife. So even though we're using this side, I think if you were to use the handle of like a plastic spoon or a plastic fork, you'll probably get the same effect. Um, and once we get into that part, I will show you exactly what I mean. So once we get a little bit closer to that, I'll go over that. That's a great question. All right. And so like I said, we're just going around the edges of our butterfly. We are working on the background. This part we are not using the palette knife for. Maybe towards the end, if we wanna go around and add some pops of color and some streaks, we'll do that. But for right now, we just wanna get our background covered, kind of base coated. All right, let's go ahead and flip this to the other side right here. I'm looking up in between my paint strokes to see where you guys are telling me that you're from. I think I saw someone from Utah. 
I also think I saw someone from North Carolina. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. We would love to hear what you guys are working on. And as I go throughout this project, I love to make it interactive for you guys. So I'm probably going to let you do some color requests and you guys can choose what colors I use as I go along. All right, and I think we'll do this. Last side over here. Right. So. Yeah, Bianca, we've got people from New York, um, Philadelphia, Colorado, just outside Chicago, Idaho, California, Maryland, uh, Ocean Springs. Oh, wow. I don't think I've ever heard of Ocean Springs before. That, that is was Boston. Oh, Boston. Cool. I love Boston. I love the lobster rolls. <laughs> okay. So we have our first coat of paint. I'm gonna go ahead and set this paintbrush off to the side. And then I think I wanna go through and add some pops of lighter blue. So let's grab this paintbrush here. So our lighter blue is the, well, actually, let's see. So the two blues that we're gonna use right here, they actually look the same, but they are slightly different. So the first one that we used was the ultramarine blue, not the true blue guys, I'm sorry. So this one that I used right here was the ultramarine blue. And now we're gonna go in with a little bit of true blue mixed with our wicker white. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of our true blue and our wicker white together, just so that we have a little bit of contrast between that and our base coat. All right, so no thinking, I'm just gonna go through and just add some pops of the white and the lighter blue mixed together does not have to be perfect you guys once i finish this i will pull out our already finished example so just so you can kind of see it again so you can see where we're kind of headed so again i am mixing our true blue and our wicker white together to kind of make a lighter blue and we are just adding some random random stripes throughout guys some random stripes and strokes. All right. Does not have to be perfect. This is one of those projects that I think anybody can do. Whether you have painted before or not. All right. So we'll add just a little bit more. I think I want some brighter pops of that white to come through. So let's add just a little bit more. And then maybe towards the end, we might even go back in and add just a little more. There we go. Bianca, do you know what uh, size canvas you're using at the moment? I know it's not the one we had for our reference yeah. photo. So I do believe this one is 11 by 16, guys. Um, the one in the reference photo is 20 by 20. So I am making a set here. So these two can be hung together and they'll be slightly different sizes, but it'll be a set that you can hang together. So this is 11 by 16. And the one over to the left of me, which I'll pull back over in just a second, is 20 by 20. All right, so I think we're gonna leave it there for now. Like I said, towards the end, if we wanna change it a little bit, we will go back in and add some more strokes, but I think this is actually pretty good for now. All right, so I'm gonna pull our finished example back over just so you can kind of see it if you just came in. So this is our finished example, just so you can kind of have an idea of where we're headed. So that is why I kind of added those random strokes of that lighter blue and white throughout. 
so that we kind of recreate this. And towards the end, we'll go back in and add a little bit more. But we'll go ahead and we'll let that dry for a little bit first. So now that our background is colored, we are going to go in and we're gonna paint our butterfly. So I think I'm gonna start with the yellow color that we have over here. And I'll give you the exact name of that before we get started. So this is the Daffodil Folk Art Yellow. Thank you, Gail. It's gonna be even prettier once it starts to come together. So I'm gonna base coat my butterfly with our yellow color. Like I said, the Daffodil Yellow. And then we will get into the fun part where we start to use our palette knives. So we're just gonna cover it up. And the reason we're not using the palette knife for this piece of the painting is because this is our background. Um, if we were to use a palette knife here, you probably see a lot of white coming through your painting at the end. So we do wanna get this part nice and covered. And again, like I said, it does not have to be perfect. Your butterfly does not need to be the perfectly drawn out butterfly that you might see somewhere in a beautiful book or anything like that. Again, it can be totally imperfect. And that is the point. This is very abstract and does not require a lot of skill. All right, go ahead and get the middle part covered. And again, like I said, if you missed it earlier, I'm gonna take color request so that we can paint this together. You guys are not here, but this can also be your project as well. So I'll call out some colors and you guys can let me know what colors you wanna see first. So, over here to the left of me, let's see. I have cardinal red. I have lime green. I have bright pink. And then I also have, let's see, violet pansy. I also have a bunch more, but those are just some of the colors that we can start with. So if anyone wants to see one of those, just let me know. All right, so we are almost done with this part. We got one and a half wings to go, bright pink. I missed your you name, got, but I did you see got, that you said bright pink. <laughs> we have a vote for cardinal red plus violet pansy plus bright pink. Uh, another vote for pansy, bright pink and purple. Bright I pink. It's so. like everybody wants to see pansy and bright pink. Okay, so we'll start with those two. We will start with pansy and bright pink. I think I'm going to start with bright pink first. All right, so we have our base coat. Someone else said pansy. <laughs> you guys like that color. Okay, so I stick our paintbrush over here and some water. And we're gonna go ahead and grab a palette knife and get started. So I will start with our bright pink color. I think I heard that one the most. And then we're gonna follow it up with pansy. So for the palette knife, you want to start by lightly dipping the palette part, the bottom part of it, in paint. So lightly dip it. And even though we're lightly dipping it, before you actually get started with painting, I would still suggest maybe taking like a paper towel and just kind of lightly tapping it before you get started because, and let me just show you guys what I mean. Because if there's too much on there and you go like this, 
that's not really the effect that we're going for. We kind of want it to be like, like that, kind of like feathered. So we don't want it to be super thick and coated. We want it to be nice and feathered like that. That way, when we add on all the other colors, there are less painted areas where our other colors can kind of like pop through. Yes, this is purple, but the exact name of it is Violet, Violet Pansy. Not Violet, it's definitely not Violet, guys. It's Violet Pansy. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and let's get started. So I already went ahead and wiped it off just a little bit. And we're gonna go around the edges of our wings and it just kind of kind of stroke. Stroke. There's no right or wrong way to do this, but you do just kind of want to stroke. Light strokes. It can go in whatever pattern you would like to. Let's actually wipe this off just a little bit more. Let's add one more coat and then lightly tap it one more time. So we're just gonna pull your knife. And kind of barely touch the canvas with it. You don't want to lay it down flat and pull it. And when I say there's no right or wrong way to do this, what I meant was like, there's no right or wrong way to do the pattern. So Bianca, we had a question. Um, should okay. the yellow be dry? Yes, yeah, so I was actually about to say, I might actually hit this with the blow dryer for just a second. So when I first did this, I didn't really allow it to dry. Um, and I still got the same effect, but this coat might be a little bit heavier than my original one. So we are going to kind of hit this with the blow dryer as soon as I finish with our purple color here. So you guys can kind of see what I mean by when I say, if you kind of like lightly stroke your knife, you kind of get these really pretty feathered strokes here. All right. And then we're gonna finish our last wing here, our last one and a half wings here. And then we're gonna hit this with the blow dryer for just a second. If you are an impatient crafter like I am, a blow dryer is your best friend. <laughs> so light strokes, light strokes. If you are just joining and this looks a little crazy, I promise it does start to come together. So light strokes, light strokes, light strokes. All right. So let's grab our blow dryer for just a second here. We'll get this dry just a little bit and then we will go in with our second color, which will be the bright pink. All right, so I'm gonna turn this on for just a second. All right, that actually dried pretty quickly, guys. So let's go ahead and let's start with our bright pink. All right, let's set this one in some water. And again, like I said, you kind of want to lightly tap the bottom of your palette knife in your paint. You don't want to go too heavy. And even with us lightly tapping it, I still would suggest for the best results to lightly tap the bottom of your palette knife again onto a piece of paper or a napkin just before you get started. Because we don't wanna make complete paint strokes, we want feathered strokes. 
Um, so let's go ahead and let's add our bright pink. So this time we might add a little bit more than we did with the purple. So let's see. Perfect. And we'll just kind of go around in the shape of our butterfly here. There we go. Add a little bit more. Rub it off some. So after the pink, does anyone have another color request? And I can call them back out if I need to. I think I said, let's see. We have the lime green, and then we have the cardinal red. And then we have this really pretty orange color over here. Let me grab it. This is the pure orange. Oh, I, that was quick. I saw two oranges. <laughs> so I guess we will go with the orange next. I saw someone say, can they, can I show an example? But I don't think I caught the end of that. I think, I think they were asking if you could show the, the finished one next to it, just so we can Oh, yeah. It. Yep. Yeah. So yes, this might look a little crazy right now, guys, but we are moving towards it looking like this. So once we layer this with colors over and over again, it should come together to start to look like our finished product right here. All right, so let's continue with our bright pink. And I'm just going in the shape of our butterfly here. There is no right or wrong way to do this. Um, I think it just all depends on how you want your wings to be patterned. So I'm just kind of going around and I'm just adding the border onto my wings here. And then as we get closer to the inside of the wings, I'll start working more towards the center here. So I'm just lightly tapping this. I'm not just going down like this and pulling it. I'm just lightly tapping, guys. Lightly tapping. And you can definitely let your layers dry um, before you go in with your other colors. Like I said, if you want to use a blow dryer, you can definitely do that. This paint dries very quickly. So we're just lightly going around here. So I'm even gonna add just some random strokes throughout the wings now. Just to kind of use up the rest of the paint that's on the bottom of my palette knife here. So let's see, let's maybe even add some random strokes right here. All right, so I think we're done with the pink for now. We're gonna move on to another color. I think I saw someone say orange. So we're gonna go ahead and start with that one. So let's bring that over here. There we go. So we are lightly tapping the bottom of our palette knife into our orange paint. Again, I'm gonna wipe it off. This is the best method that I found. If you guys have tried this before, please give me some tips and tricks that you might have found on your own. I always love to hear what you, with what you guys come up with. All right. So now we kind of have a border going on here on the wing. So I think I'm gonna like start adding more paint onto the actual wing part versus the border. So I'm gonna wipe this off one more time, just a little bit, not a lot. And we are just going to add some random strokes. All right. Wipe it off just a little. 
We'll come over here to the other side of our butterfly. Light pulls, light and quick pulls. And if you're gonna go heavier, I would suggest going heavier around the borders. Because if you go too heavy on the wings, you might not be able to see the other colors that we're gonna add. Or um, if you add your colors, like once we add more layers to this, if you add heavy coats, you won't be able to see the colors that were underneath it. So that's kind of why I'm suggesting that you guys wipe off your paint palette, your knife palette, before you add your colors on. Let's add a little up here. I think I kind of want to get heavy with the orange here. Uh-oh. So let's kind of go back around the light pink areas. Uh, not our light pink, our bright pink color. But we don't want to cover it up. We just want to accent it. And then after this, I think I will, I think I'm gonna go with some light green. All right. Has anyone ever tried painting with a palette knife before? Okay. So I think I'm gonna move on to our next color. And I am going to do our lime green. This is kind of like a light green color here. So let's go ahead and pull that over here. I see some of you guys saying nope, but I love the effect. Oh, the end of a foam brush. Yeah, I really like this um, method of painting. I really like it. It allows you the room to mess up. And I think that's what I really like about it. Okay, so we have our green here. I'm gonna wipe this off just a little bit more. And we are just going to go through again and just add some random strokes. Again, I am just lightly dragging the bottom of our knife around. I'm not just laying it flat and pulling it if you're just coming in. I'm doing light strokes, light tapping strokes. So I'm pulling and tapping at the same time without my knife being flat on the surface. It's kind of like adding butter on some bread. <laughs> That's kind of how it feels. Let's bring this around. Let's pull it. Then I'll name off some other colors here so that you guys can give me your color requests again. I think the other colors that we have not used are our lighter pink color. I'll pull that out and I'll get the exact name for that for you. And then I see we have a apple red over here. And then we can do our white by itself. Earlier we mixed the white with the aquamarine, but we can just do white by itself. So I think that's enough green for now. Let's set our palette knife in some water. All right, so I will show you guys the 
baby pink. So we have that here. We have our cardinal red. And we also have the apple red. And then we have the wicker white. So I think these are the only colors that we have not used so far. I saw somebody shoot their vote for apple red. Ooh, apple red. That's actually what I was going to choose next <laughs> if I didn't see any suggestions. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll go in with the pink, Nicole. I see your request. So we're going to start with the apple red which is the lighter of the two reds here. So the cardinal red is a little bit darker. I can show you guys the difference here if you wanna see it. So the cardinal red is a little bit deeper and then our apple red is a little bit brighter. And again, these are both folk art matte colors. So if you're gonna try this project at home, I would suggest having some scrap paper next to you or a stack of paper towels. That way you can continue to kind of just tap the paint off of your palette knife as you go throughout this project. So with the apple red, I think I'm gonna get a little bit heavier. So let's see. I'm gonna pull away from me. Oh, Bianca, here's a good question. Okay. Uh, what would happen if you had more than one color on the knife at the same time? Oh, I don't know. You guys want to try that together? We can try a section and see what happens. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, that's a great question. Okay. Let me finish this red here and we will try that. That was a great idea. So let's see. I like to try to pull away from me versus towards me. So I'm going to flip the painting around. So if you're going to try the butterfly at home, you're going to be doing a lot of flipping, unless you're standing up and you're going to be doing a lot of spinning around your canvas. So you might find your own method at home, but I kind of like to pull away from me. It feels a little bit more natural and easier. So let's kind of get a little heavy. So you can kind of start to see all the colors blending together as we work our way in to the middle of our butterfly. So let's flip this again. And I think I want to get a little bit heavier right in here with our apple red. Light quick strokes, guys. Light quick strokes. That is the key to this project. All right. And then we are going to mix some colors and we're going to see what happens. We are going to experiment together. And if you start to get paint, um, like right here towards the middle, that is totally fine. We're going to cover this up towards the end anyway, so it does not matter. All right, so I think we are going to move on to our lighter pink. And let's see, I think we should mix, hmm, let's mix our lighter pink and some white together. White or, yeah, let's mix some light pink. So let's move this over so you can kind of see it. So this is our baby pink, our lighter pink color versus our bright pink right here. So I'm gonna lightly dip that in our light pink and then I'm going to also dip this in our wicker white. And if it gets a little blue on there, gets a little bit of blue on there, I don't think I'm mad at that. Let's see what happens. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of our blue on here too. So we actually have three colors going on here. Let's see what happens, guys. But I'm still going to tap it because we don't want to cover up all of our co other colors that we already have painted on. So let's see. Let's see what happens. That kind of looks like a really pretty marble. 
All right, let's see. Let's start. Oh, I like it. I see the blue. You can also see where like the white is blending in kind of because it's kind of making the colors a little bit lighter. So this is what happens when you combine colors, guys. I like it. Hopefully you guys can kind of tell where that blue and pink is meeting at. Great suggestion. I didn't catch your name, but whoever suggested that, that was a great idea. I believe that was Janet that suggested that. Okay. So this is what happens when you kind of combine your colors, guys. So we are going to add on a few more layers of colors here. We're gonna go ahead and repeat some colors and then we'll work on covering up the middle of our butterfly and then kind of going around and outlining it so that it looks not necessarily neat, but more finished and complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out our palette knife that has been cleaned off. Let's see. Before we do that, can we hold up the original one more time? Oh yes, absolutely. So if you're looking at this and you're like, where's this headed? <laughs> this is where we're going with it, you guys. So this is the effect that the palette knife gives. It gives these beautiful colors here that are kind of like blending together and feathered. They aren't perfect strokes. Like I said, this is what I love about this project. It is definitely imperfect. You're totally welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, so this is the effect that the palette knife gives. It's really easy. Um, and yeah, it's really fun too. Really, really fun. You don't have to think about anything. You just kind of go in and follow your heart. I love crafts like that. They don't require a lot of thinking. So I think I'm going to go back with our orange. And then also, just because we use the yellow as our base coat does not mean that we cannot use it again. So I think after the orange, we're going to go back in with a little bit of yellow. Okay, so lightly tap again. Flatly tap. And I have not had to use my blow dryer again, but you definitely can as you work on this project. If you want your strokes to be dry before you move on to your next one, but you also might not want them to be dry. You might want them to blend together. I think it's totally up to you and how you want your finished product to look. So let's kind of go heavy a little bit with our orange color in some random areas here. I'm gonna try to kind of fill in the wings a little bit more here. And if you didn't catch what I said earlier, I like to pull away from me. I don't like to pull in towards me. I think it feels a little bit natural to go out. I'm doing my best here to kind of follow the shape of my wings. All right, let's add a little bit more orange. Tap it, let's bring a napkin over, tap the guinea. All right. So yeah, even if you aren't doing a butterfly at home, if you are a person that draws or you sketch well, I think that this would be like a really cool abstract portrait of someone um, or something, like an, app, an actual object. I think that would be really, really cool. Okay, so 
we're going to do some yellow and then I think we're going to do white by itself. And then I think I also want to go in with some dark blue. And once we add in those colors, we're going to do the middle and then do our outline. And then it should start to look something like what we have over here to the left side. If you guys want me to pull that out again, I totally can. Just let me know. If you are just joining and you have not seen it, I can pull it out for you guys. So let's do our ultramarine blue. This is a really dark color here. So I definitely want to wipe our knife off before we go in because what I don't want to do is cover up too much of the lighter colors that we already use. And actually, before I go in, I think I'm going to blow dry it for just a second here. All right, yes, I saw this someone said, can I pull out the original, yes. And speaking of blow drying, when would you suggest that people should blow dry their painting? So I would say definitely after your base coat. So if you weren't here earlier, before we started adding on all of our colors, we painted the entire butterfly yellow first. I think that's probably where you should start to use your blow dryer and we don't want to add too much paint when we're going through with our palette knife, but if you do add too much before you move on to your next color, I would definitely say to blow dry. That way your colors aren't mixing too much. You do want them to look blended, but you don't want one color to overpower the other one. So I would say as you go through with your different colors, maybe every now and then use your blow dryer, especially if you add on a little bit too much paint. Um, so, okay. Let's go ahead and let's move on to our next color, which was, I think I was starting with the blue, the ultramarine blue. Okay. And I think I was saying that I didn't want to add too much because I don't want to co cover up too much of the other colors that we have already added on. So, so this is a very dark color. If we do too much, you won't be able to see all of the other pretty reds and greens and pinks that we have already added so far. And then after this, I wanna go in with our yellow, which is the daffodil yellow. And then we're gonna do the baby pink again. Bianca, can you explain why you're using uh, so many different palette knives and why you're using a different one for each color? Yeah, so honestly, I just look at these like paint brushes. So if you're doing a painting that has multiple colors, um, unless you would like to keep, you know, cleaning off your paintbrush over and over, I would definitely suggest using multiple palette knives so that you don't have to keep cleaning it. Um, we do want our colors to be separate, even though on the canvas, they look like they're blending. Again, going back to what I said just a second ago, you don't want one power, you don't want one color to overpower the other. So I would suggest, you know, having multiple palette knives, you don't have to have one for every single color, but um, I think the biggest part with any project is the prep. So <laughs> I think that having the proper amount of um, materials that you need for your project just helps you move along a lot faster. You can definitely use one, but I think that if you use one, it would take you a lot longer to complete your project. I'm kind of going to get dark around our border of our wings here, just to kind of start creating the outline of it, the completed outline. I know we started with one already, but just so that you can kind of see the shape of it a little bit more. Okay. 
Like I said, this project might require a bit of spinning around, especially if you're going to do a butterfly like I'm doing here. All right. And let's also add some random pops throughout our wings here. So I think I had a little bit too much on my palette knife here, but I'm actually glad that that happened. That way you can see what I mean when there's a little bit too much paint. Not that we can't fix this and not that there's anything wrong with it, but when there's a little bit too much paint, you see how you can't see any of those other colors underneath it. So that's what I mean by you wanna make sure that you tap some of that paint off before you go in, unless this is the result that you want. But the point of this particular project is to make sure that all of your colors are shining through. But we'll fix that. We will fix that. Okay. So I think I'm gonna do light pink and then we are gonna work on covering up the middle of our butterfly here. So let's use our baby pink, which is my favorite color. I love light pink. <clears throat> okay, so let's go through. Again, like I said, I like to kind of pull away from me. And I am doing light taps slash strokes. I'm gonna have to come up with a word for that. <clears throat> Maybe a tapping stroke. I don't know if that's a real thing, but that's the best way for me to try to describe it here. Put this around just a little bit. So I have two areas that I kind of want to fix. So you can kind of see where there was a little bit too much paint here and a little bit too much paint here. But these are good examples that I can show you how to fix them if you don't like it. Okay. So in the meantime, before we go back and fix these, I think I'm just going to let this dry for a second. We're going to go ahead and work on finishing the middle of our butterfly here. So I kind of want it to be a dark color. So I'm going to use purple. And that will be the base of our middle. And then we'll add some other fun pops of color. So for this, you kind of don't have to worry about it being uh, not so much paint. You can kind of actually let it be. Not necessarily a lot of paint, but you don't have to worry about getting too much of your paint off here because we do kind of want to base coat it. And this is also probably another part of the painting where you could mix colors. You might want to get creative and do that. All right. So, yep. So now it's starting to kind of look like an actual butterfly here. It actually has a middle part this actual body. Okay, we'll add a little bit more down here. And if it's easier for you to use a paintbrush to do this part, you totally can. Definitely do not have to use the paint, the palette knife for this part. Okay, so I think that's a good enough base coat. And then I'm going to hit this with the blow dryer again, just before we go in and add a little bit more detail.
this paint dries super quick guys I think that's what I really love about it I don't even think that was 30 seconds and this is like maybe not totally dry but it's dry enough for us to go ahead and move on so I really like that about this paint um okay so while the middle the body part of our butterfly is drying up just a little bit more these parts right here where I added a little bit too much paint. Let's go ahead and try to fix those. So let's do, I don't know, let's see. Let's do some of our cardinal red because I don't think we've used that yet. We only use the apple red. So I'm tapping and we're getting some of that paint off before we go in. And let's just do some light strokes over top of it. So we're kind of blending it in with the rest of the painting here. Bianca, what would you say if somebody is having trouble getting the paint to come off their palette knife onto the canvas? Um, Off the palette knife and onto the canvas. Ask me that one more time. If you're having trouble with your- Yeah, like if the paint is kind of thick and it like isn't really scraping onto the canvas and off the knife, Mm. Um. it could be that like you maybe the paint was like I don't know in a climate or something that is mm -hmm. okay you know Got like it. you like it's hardening it in a way so maybe like add like I mean just the smallest little drop of water like the tiniest little yes yeah and yeah I think loosen it up some yeah, I think that's a great suggestion. Adding a little bit of water. If you're nowhere near water, which you should be when you're painting, um, maybe even adding um, a tiny drop of another paint that's kind of similar. Um, but water would probably be the best suggestion unless you do want to do paint and you don't mind like mixing your colors together just a little bit. That might loosen it up. So let's see, we have this stroke over here that was a little bit thick. So let's try to fix this blue one over here, which again, is nothing wrong with it at all. It's just, I wanted my colors to be a little bit more blended. And then I think the last color that we will do will be our bright pink on our wings. And then we'll go ahead and finish up the middle and add the border, the final border around our wings. Then we might even add a little bit more detail to our background here with some treasure gold colors. If you guys can think of any other fun projects that you think you could do with this method of painting, let me know. I might try it at home. I think this is a really relaxing way to paint. If you didn't catch what I said earlier, like this is really mindless. You don't have to think about it. You just kind of just go for it. There's no right or wrong pattern here. It's really abstract. So there's no real way to mess up. So let's kind of go in here just a little bit. I am going heavier with the red just a little bit to kind of cover up any big pieces of yellow that we see here, which was our base coat. And then we'll finish it off with our baby pink. And again, right now I am using our cardinal red, which is a little bit darker than the apple red color that we used earlier. They're really similar. I think it's just like one shade away from the other one. So let's wipe this off just a little bit more. And again, I will pull out our finished example Again, just so you guys can see where we are headed, if you haven't seen it already, 
and you're like, what in the world are we doing? <laughs> I'll show you the example one more time or a few more times before we finish up. So let's flip this around here and see. All right, and then I think we said the last color that we'll do is our baby pink. Um, I might add a little bit of white just to kind of lighten this up just a little bit. But if the baby pink is enough, we might leave it at that, but we'll see. Let's grab another one of our palette knives. I let it sit in some water for a little bit so that it could clean itself off before we moved on to our next color. All righty. So back to our baby pink. Again, I'm going to lightly wipe this off. We don't want to wipe all of the paint off. We want just enough so that it's not too thick. All right. So let's see here. And at the end of this project, if there are pieces um, of your painting that you do want to look a certain way and you feel like you can't necessarily achieve that with the palette knife, you can definitely use a paintbrush, definitely. At the end of this project, there were some areas that I did kind of want to touch up, so I did use a paintbrush. That is totally fine, totally fine. And I think the middle part of our butterfly here is pretty dry, so we can start adding a few more colors to that, but I do kind of want to leave it like a darker color for the most part. That way it is clearly separated between itself and the wings so that there is a contrast. You can even kind of like use the side of your knife And what I did right here, again, I'm pulling away from you and not towards me. Whichever one feels more comfortable for you. Let's pull this that way. I'm going to split this just a little bit. That way I'm pulling away from you. Okay. And then the little bit of pink that we have left on here, I think I want to add that to the middle part of our butterfly, just a little bit, not a lot, not a lot at all. Okay, so I think I do wanna add some white, but then after that, I think that I am pretty much done with the wings. So let's grab one more palette knife here that has been sitting in some water and we'll add a little bit of white. And if you guys are tuning in after someone suggested mixing colors, we did that. We added three different paints to the back of our palette knife. And that was pretty cool. So if you're wondering how that worked out at home, I liked it. I liked it. You might even want to do your entire painting like that. You can get creative. So let's see. go and now what I'm doing right now is kind of like going in the shape of my wings that way you can kind of see the form of them right, we'll add a little bit more white here and this is the wicker white color wicker white folk art matte a little bit throughout here. Right, let's flip this around. Like I said, this project requires a lot of flipping and spinning. <laughs> All right. If you guys are not a painter, again, do not be intimidated by this project. The entire point of it is for it to be perfectly imperfect.
Alrighty. I think once I finish with the white here, I will move on to adding the border around our wings. But if you guys have any other color requests in the meantime, just let me know. We'll add a few pops of white throughout our wings here. So let's bring this back to its original position here. Okay, so now I am going to grab a regular paintbrush here and I'm gonna go around and add a little bit of a border. And for that part, I'm going to use the licorice color here, which is pretty much a black color, but this is licorice. Let's go ahead and pour a little bit of this out. All right, can we see the original please? Yes, you can, give me just a second. Give me just a second here. So this is the original. And again, like I said, towards the end here, if we do want to go back in and add a little bit more detail, we can to get it a little bit closer to this. So this is the original guys, and this is what we are working on. This one is a little bit smaller because we're creating a set here. And if you didn't catch it earlier, this is an 11 by 16 canvas. And the one that I just showed you is a 20 by 20. All right. So I'm pouring out a little bit of our black here our folk art licorice matte color. And I'm just gonna kind of go around and add a little bit of a border. You can use your palette knife for this. You definitely can. I'm gonna use a regular paintbrush here. So I'm just gonna do some imperfect strokes. Same thing with this. You want to make sure that your paintbrush is lightly, lightly coated. This is a painting where we don't want the lines to be like exact and literal. You want everything to be kind of feathered and abstract. We don't want anything to be perfect. So we are lightly using the paint on our paintbrush and we're just gonna kind of go around and feather, feather our border. Lightly, same thing, like kind of what we did with our palette knife. Tapping strokes. We don't just want to lay it down and go around. We're just going to kind of tap our way around the wings. There we go. And if you weren't here earlier for any color requests or you didn't get to see one or pick one, there is still time. We can go back in and add a little more detail or add some extra colors if you would like. And then we still have some metallic colors that we're gonna add to our background here. And I'll let you know the name of those. Those are our treasure gold colors. Alrighty, so add a little bit around the body of our butterfly here. That way we kind of separate it from our wings. Alrighty, there we go. I would love to hear what paint projects you guys are working on at home or any that you have coming up or if you're gonna try this project at home. So let's kind of go back around here. Add a little more. Your question got a little bit cut off, but I think I saw half of it. I think you said, can you explain a little bit more about the color that I use? But that's all I saw. 
Yeah, they said, can you tell us about the colors you used on the inspiration piece? Like, uh, what color is the base color of the butterfly? The base color of the butterfly is the daffodil yellow. And that's the same color that we started with here. So daffodil yellow, and then for the background of the photo here, ultramarine blue was used and so was true blue. And it was also mixed with the wicker white to kind of create those pops of white that you see throughout. And then also we haven't added it on yet, but the treasure gold platinum was used. And so was the treasure gold aquamarine. Yeah. So those were kind of like the base colors. Um, as I finish throughout here, I will go back through all of the colors that we used again. Yep. Michaela, that's a great idea. A mix of the palette knife and regular knife. I think that's a great idea, which is what we're doing here. So let's see. Let's add a few more. A few more strokes of our black. We don't want it to be perfect. We don't need it to look perfectly outlined, just enough so that we know what the end of the wing is, where it starts and where it stops. Doesn't have to be perfectly outlined. And then while we're here, we can actually, actually, I was gonna add on some antennas. We'll save that for the very last part. Very, very last part. So, I think we are done with that part. I don't think we need to add any more to the border. Like I said, we don't want it to be literal. Just enough, just, just enough. So I might actually like make the insides just a little bit thicker. But again, not too much. I'm feathering it the same way that I would with the palette knife. kind of blending it in. So yep, definitely at home. If you wanna add in some details that you know you just can't achieve with the palette knife, you can definitely go in with a regular brush. All right. So let's add a little bit around here too. All right. So, while all of that is drying, we are going to go back to our background here. And we can add in some of the treasure gold colors. Again, like I said, we have platinum and we have aquamarine here. I'm gonna grab another paintbrush, actually a few paintbrushes, and add some of those colors throughout. We might even add a little bit more white. And actually, let's go ahead and start with the white, which is called wicker white. All of this, except for our treasure gold colors, are folk art matte. And if you need me to go through any of them and tell you the colors one more time, just let me know. So we are just doing random strokes, guys, random strokes. Nothing is really intentional here. All right. This is very abstract. Oh, I believe. Bianca, what size brush are you using again? So this is a half inch flat paintbrush, the one that I'm using right now. Cool. Okay, so let's see. So now I'm going to use the three fourths flat brush and we are going to add in some pops of our aquamarine here, just to add a little bit of shimmer. 
So again, random strokes. I'm not really following, following any pattern or anything here. I'm just adding in some random strokes. The only thing I am doing is I'm trying to make sure that our strokes are going the same direction here as best as I can. Even though our butterfly is a little slanted here, he's kind of flying sideways. <laughs> so we'll come here on our other sides. Add some. Not too much, just enough for our painting to shimmer. So we'll come over here. And then we will also go behind this with the Platinum Treasure Gold color. All right, so we'll go ahead and set this one in some water. And now we are going to do a little bit of platinum. Same thing. And we can actually, actually, let's go back with our palette knife for this part. And let's see what happens here. We saw what happened with the paintbrush, but now let's see. Let's do our platinum color with our palette knife. So same thing we did earlier. You wanna wipe some of that paint off. You don't want too much. And like I said, I like to pull away from me. So it creates even more of a feathered effect. Little bit of that paint off again, and we'll come around the other sides here. And this just adds just a little bit of glam, a little bit of pop of shimmer to our painting here. With the palette knife, I keep saying it, but if you didn't catch it earlier, I like to pull away from me. Let's move this over just a little bit. All righty. Right. And so let's put this back to its original position. Go back around a little bit, just a few more times. And then while that dries, the last step is gonna be to add some splatters throughout. Well, before we add on our splatters, um, I might just do a little bit more to our wings here. Let's see, let's do, let's finish off our wings with one of our red colors. And like I said, while this is drying, um, before we finish it, we are going to come back in with the splatter. So we're gonna let the background dry just a little bit. We're gonna work on the wings a little more, add our splatters and our antennas and we will be done. I saw a question, the questions flash really, really fast across my screen guys, but I did see that you asked something. I'll try to get that answer for you. I think you said- uh, They just asked, how did you start working with palette knives? Okay. Um, I like to try a lot of different things. Um, I'm a crafter that likes to craft any and everything. Um, and I think I saw this one day um I saw a painting and it was actually an animal as well kind of like what we're doing here um and I just tried it and it was a really cool way to paint 
like I said, um, I am not the best when it comes to drawing. So I've always been intimidated by painting, but I really love this because it allows, like I said, room for error because there really is no way to mess it up. I think, like I said earlier, it's perfectly imperfect. And yeah, I just kind of went for it. But I'm pretty sure you guys can go and look up palette, palette knife painting and you'll see a million different examples. You can kind of gain some inspiration from there as well. I'm sure that there are some really large scale paintings that would really inspire you. So it's like a little bit more of that red off. All right. And we are wrapping up here, guys. We are almost towards the end. I'm kind of going through and just adding some last strokes to try to not necessarily cover up the yellow, but just try to add a few more layers to it because you don't want one color to necessarily overpower the others. I think that's the point of this project. You want everything to blend well. So let's flip this around. Add a few more strokes. Then we'll add on our splatters and we will be done here, guys. So at home, if you try this project, and let's just say you don't necessarily like how your painting um, turned out, just keep practicing. Just keep practicing. Um, you might even wanna just do like an abstract painting that's not necessarily an object or anything. Maybe you just want a canvas full of strokes. I think that would be beautiful. And I think that's also a great way to kind of practice with palette knife painting. You might be surprised with the results that you get. Um, Bianca, okay. as soon as you can, could you um, bring the, yep. the painting like way up to the camera so that everyone can see the details of the strokes, please? Thank yeah, you. Of course. Yep, so you can kind of see the strokes that the palette knife creates. Very random. Like I said, nothing is perfect. The point of it is to kind of like blend the colors and to create those imperfect strokes. So that is what the palette knife does. Okay, so um, let's actually go ahead and add on our antennas now. I'm gonna use a regular paintbrush for this part because they're so skinny and so quick don't necessarily need to use our palette knife here. So let's actually, let's switch to a smaller brush. That one might be a little bit too big. So let's use our smaller one here. We'll just draw them. Just two quick little lines. All right. And then we will add on some splatters. And actually while I'm here with, with the black paint, I'm just gonna add a little bit more of a border to our butterfly's body, just a little bit. While we are here anyways. All right. All right, so now we are going to do a few paint splatters. So my method of paint splatters um, may be a little bit different from yours. Can show the antenna, okay. Let's see, just two quick lines there. Just 
just like our original here. Just two quick antennas right there. Okay. So if you are in a space where you just can't throw like paint all over the place, which is like really fun to do, <laughs> and you need your splatters to be a little bit controlled, what I like to do is take a paintbrush and then let's do some dark blue spat splatters. So we'll use our ultramarine blue. So I dip my paint, I dip my paintbrush in the color that I want, and then I take it and then I dip it into some water just to kind of loosen that paint up. We need it to get thin so that it easily comes off of the paintbrush. So let's loosen up that paint color. Might even want to wipe it off just a little bit, not a lot. So see how that water kind of made it bleed just a little bit. So then we are going to take another paintbrush and we're just going to kind of hit it. So these are tiny little dots. Hopefully you guys can see them as I go along. If you can't, I will hold it up afterwards. So I'm gonna add a little bit more paint. And then we're gonna dip it again. Loosen up that color. So there we go. So in my opinion, this is the neatest way to do it. Of course, you wanna protect your surface. You wanna add some paper down if you are trying to protect your surface. If you're in your craft room, you're like, I don't care, then hey. <laughs> but yeah, this is the neatest way to do it. Um, if you have a wall that you can kind of like hang your painting on and you just wanna like throw splatters at it, you can definitely do that as well. This way, and method is a little bit more controlled. So let's also do some yellow. Let's see, let's grab one of our other brushes over here. We'll do some yellow splatters. Alrighty. Again, just kind of want to dip it in some water, loosen up that paint. And then we're gonna grab our other paintbrush again and we'll just kind of go through. Hopefully with the lighter color, you guys can kind of see it from where we are. I'll hold it up afterwards. There we go. And then I think we'll also do some light pink, but let's do a little bit more yellow, just a little bit. Again, I am. Tap, tap, tap in lightly. All right, and then we will do some pink guys and then I think we will be wrapping up here. So let's grab one more paintbrush and do some pink. And then with the completely dry example that I have over here, I'll pull it out just so that you can see what it should look like once it's totally done and once you've added in maybe some more detail. Maybe your painting dry and you're like, mm, I think I wanna add in a little bit more of this. I'll pull this one out over here so that you can see it. Okay, so. So this is our bright pink color. I've dipped it in the water over here. We're gonna go through with this. And add splatters of this. A little bit more paint. A little bit more paint. Before we wrap all the way up, if you guys would like for me to go through all of these colors one more time, I definitely can. Not a problem at all. Dip this in some water. Go around with it. Alrighty. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and move this out of the way. It's getting a little messy, guys. I'm a messy crafter. <laughs> 
it gets really messy at home whenever I craft. I've sacrificed a lot of my clothes in the name of crafting. Don't be like me. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of the way. You are so welcome, Jane. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this. Can you show? Oh yes, I'm sorry, I forgot to show the splatters close up. So yes, these are the splatters. Yes, definitely need to wear an apron if you are going to do splatters. So yep, you can also kind of see where those metallic colors are kind of like pulling through. So yep, you guys can kind of see the splatters here. Yeah. So that is this one. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one out of, oh, actually, when I kind of like tilt it, you can kind of see those colors, those treasure gold colors popping and shimmering. Yeah, you can absolutely use any colors that you want to. Absolutely. You do not have to stick to this exact color scheme. Thank you, guys. I had fun with you as well. So I'm going to go ahead and set that off to the side. And like I said, once your painting is all the way dry, and maybe you want to go in and add a little bit more details, or you want one more color, or you want one color to pop more than the other ones, you can go through with your palette knife or even maybe a regular paintbrush and add a little bit more. And this is what it should look like, you guys. This is what it should look like. So thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. I hope you enjoyed this project. I hope that you guys find a fun palette knife project to try out at home. We would love to see it. Find us on social media and tag us in it so that we can see your finished product. And we will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.